Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to some more crazy model train experiments. All of the ideas for today's experiments actually came from you guys in the comments so thank you very very much for that and keep it up if you have any wacky experiments that you'd like to see done on this channel pop them down into the comments and they might get made into videos now this is all just for a little bit of fun i know people are going to roll their eyes here he goes doing more pointless experiments but you know what no matter how seriously you pretend to take this hobby it all boils down to playing with toy trains and that's supposed to be fun so that is my justification for this i don't think we're going to learn anything from today's experiments although i did think that of the tight curve experiment you can check it out up there but actually i learned quite a lot from that my tiny little mind was blown by it so yeah check it out if you like okay experiment number one then this amused me when i saw it in the comments what happens when you freeze a model train I don't know, but today we're going to find out. So yesterday before this video I placed one of my 040s into a container and then I popped that into the freezer. And at the end of this video I'll go and get it, we'll bring it back up here and we'll find out whether it still works or not. You make a prediction though down in the comments, what do you think is going to happen? Will the loco work or not? We will find out. Okay, experiment number two then. Can a double O gauge locomotive haul an O gauge train? Well, I think I know the answer to that one because there are so many really strong double O gauge locomotives. So to make this one a little bit more of a challenge, I have this old faithful. It is the little Hornby 040 Peckett. Let's find out how much of an O gauge train this tiny little loco can handle. So my initial plan for this experiment was to sort of nestle the double O gauge track between the rails of my O gauge track and run the experiment like that. But as you can see, there isn't going to be enough space that's going to interfere with the O gauge wagons. So instead, I'm going to have to put the double O gauge track next to the O gauge layout and make the O gauge wagons like a barge on a canal and the pecket will be like a horse on the towpath. So hopefully this is going to work. I'm just gonna make it a short section of track. We don't need absolutely loads. So if I join these two quadruple straights together, I think that should give us enough space to have the pecket do a good little run. I'm a bit nervous for that poor little pecket. <laughs> Right, so we have power to the Peckett, check. We've got six wagons, a couple of them really big heavy ones, check. We need to get the Peckett coupled up to the wagons and as you saw during the montage, I've just put some cotton onto the couplings. Okay, I think the two are coupled, check. That means we're ready for the experiment now. Can this little Peckett handle six wagons? When I was thinking about this in my mind, I thought, yes, easily, these Peckets are powerful. Seeing this set up like this, I'm not entirely sure. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's give some juice to the Peckett and see if she can become what is probably the first ever double O gauge Peckett to haul an O gauge train. Here we go. Forwards we go. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like she's hauling that as easily as she would haul a double O gauge train. Look at that. Wow. Easy absolutely easy nothing to it look at that not even breaking a sweat you know what that means then it means i've got to add the auto coach right we now have a pecket six huge wagons and now a mighty auto coach into which literally 10 or 15 pecket's could fit is there any way this pecket can manage this train i have no idea come on let's find out here we go pecket good luck Speed it up a little bit. Hey, look, it's going. Oh gosh, oh, that was fast. <laughs> so actually, once it got a bit of momentum, it was actually doing that absolutely fine. Wow, is there anything that little pecket cannot do? All right, well, I think that is a pass. Experiment complete. Let's move on. 
The next experiment comes from a phrase, an annoying phrase, that's kicked around in this hobby quite a lot. It's used to describe locomotives that aren't very powerful, and it is, that locomotive could not pull the skin off a rice pudding. What does that mean? It's not even relevant to the hobby. And yet it's used all the time. I hear it <laughs> like every week probably. Okay, so what, what is my beef with that phrase? Well, first of all, is it particularly easy to pull the skin off a rice pudding? Have you ever done it? No, of course not. You don't pull the skin off a rice pudding. You mix it in and eat it like that. And as far as I'm concerned, the skin of a rice pudding is a very fragile and delicate thing. I think it would be pretty difficult to pull the skin off a rice pudding, to be perfectly honest with you. And to find out, I have a tin of rice pudding and a Hornbeak Class 56, and we're gonna give it a go. Let me show you what I've got planned. So here is the bowl that I'm going to fill with the creamy rice pudding, but there is a bit of a problem. How do we couple a Hornbeak Class 56 to the skin of a rice pudding? Won't it just break? Well, so I've decided I'm going to strengthen the skin of the rice pudding with uh, a handkerchief here. Now that is not cheating, okay? There's a good reason why this is not cheating, because we're not trying to test the surface tension of a rice pudding skin. We're not testing its tensile strength. We're testing the adhesion of the rice pudding skin with the rest of the pudding to find out whether or not a Hornby Class 56 is strong enough to separate the skin from the rest of the pudding. So that's why this is not cheating. Let's see here, let's create a circle with the cloth. And I don't want it to be a, you know, an entire cloth covering the skin. I do want the rice pudding skin to be able to touch the rest of the pudding. So we're just going to put some supports in like this before I cut it out. And now let's cut this thing out. This is the closest thing I've ever done to sewing and making clothes and things. So if you've got some strange fetish about seeing me doing that, then uh, yeah, happy Christmas. Okay, there. So now I have a sort of cover that I can put onto the skin of the rice pudding. And when we bake the rice pudding, this should become a part of the skin, which should allow us to pull the skin off nice and easily. Now I'm going to use this cotton which will allow us to somehow couple the locomotive to this little thin cloth that I've produced. So let's tie that on. Okay, there we go. So now there's, you probably can't see it too well, but there's a loop of cotton around this, which will allow us to hopefully quite easily pull off the skin of the rice pudding. Speaking of which, we now get on to the best bit, and let's be honest, this right here is the only reason this experiment is being done today. So well done, whoever suggested this. Uh, let's get the top of the rice pudding off then with the can opener. Rice pudding, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I wonder if everybody knows what this is. Do you have rice pudding over in the US? I don't know. Right, let's get the gross lid out of the way. Let's give it a little mix. How long does this thing need? Because I'm going to have to cook it. Uh, two minutes, two to two and a half minutes. Well, I'll probably give it quite a bit longer than that. Well, a little bit. I do intend to consume the rice pudding after the video, so I'm not going to ruin it. But uh, yeah, I do want to form a good quality skin on this rice pudding. So into the bowl we go. Is it going to fill the bowl? I'm hoping it will more or less do so. Can you eat rice pudding cold? I really want to try it. <laughs> no, no, no. May not taste the experiment. I get to see how stingy I am now, I'm getting every last morsel of rice pudding out. Okay. I don't really know whether a skin would naturally form on the rice pudding without me microwaving it. I don't really know. But I don't like cold rice pudding, so we're going to microwave it. Right. The skin cover goes on top like this. Let it soak in some of the pudding. And then, I hope my fingers are clean. I'm just going to take very, very small amounts of the rice pudding and just cover the skin maker. Now people will, if I do this too thickly, people will say that I've cheated and I've made the skin too thick and that the skin would never be this thick in real life. So I'm being very careful just to add a tiny, tiny amount to the top. Right, to the microwave. Okay, we have a cooked rice pudding. Ah, good Lord, that is hot. Okay, so I mean, the skin, to be honest with you, doesn't look particularly skinny. It has literally just come out of the microwave. It's still very fresh. So I'm thinking we'll let it sit for a little while let our skin build up, and then we'll try and see if the Class 56 can pull it off again. All right, see you in a second. Okay, we're about 10 minutes in, and that, to me, looks like a skin. 
which means we're ready to proceed. So let's get this down onto the, well, near the track <laughs> and get the 56 on as well. And we'll see if this skin can be pulled off. So let's find out then, can a moderately powerful double O gauge locomotive pull the skin off a rice pudding? Let's find out, forwards we go. Oh, something's happening. <laughs> More. Oh, there comes the skin. Oh my God, it's really struggling. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that word. <laughs> that is possibly the most vile thing that's ever been shown on this channel. It looks so gross. So yes, you can pull the skin. <laughs> a locomotive can pull the skin off a rice pudding. It really, really struggled though. I mean, it does take a pretty powerful, like I say, a fairly powerful locomotive to do this. If you come across a locomotive that cannot pull the skin off a rice pudding, that does not mean that it is a weak locomotive because that took a lot of effort. Mmm. <laughs> well, mm, good God, I love rice pudding. Let's move on. And on that bombshell, let's move back to the first experiment. What happens when you freeze a model locomotive? Now I'm gonna do this in one shot. I'm gonna set up the camera, then I'll go to the freezer and rush the locomotive straight up here to give it a try because I don't want it to thaw out. What is going to happen? My prediction is I think it will work absolutely fine, but I don't know, maybe if there's loads of water vapor in there, the, the mechanism will be all frozen solid. Maybe, I suppose it depends on the freezing temperature of the lubricant. What if the lubricant has gone rock solid? I really don't know. I'm gonna set up the camera then, I'll go and fetch the locomotive, and we will find out who is right. Let's do it. Right folks, you are set up and ready to go. And like I say, the idea is going to be, I will run downstairs, bring the loco up as quick as I possibly can, get it straight onto the track and get power straight to it and we'll find out whether the thing works. Are you ready? I'll see you in hopefully not very long. Okay, one locomotive ice lolly coming right up. And my God, <laughs> this thing looks really messed up. Look how frosty it looks. Okay, power to it. Is it gonna work? No, <laughs> it twitched. It's twitching, but it can't work. Okay, so let's give it a few minutes and I'll get some close-ups so you can see how frosty this thing looks. Look at this. This is actually really cool. It's kind of like free weathering if you want to make a model railway that's set in like a really cold place. Don't bother trying to make the local look weathered, just bung it in the freezer. <laughs> I mean, the local won't work after you've done it, but that effect is awesome. Let's try and get a bit closer on it. Poor thing, I bet it's freezing cold. Yep, that is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. As you can see, the plastic obviously has a much lower specific heat capacity than the chassis because all of the frost has melted on there now. But the chassis is still really icy looking. Is it working now? Oh, looked like it was gonna, sort of. What's going on underneath? Let's have a look. It's still pretty, pretty cold to the touch. Even the wheels are dead frosty. Looks like the lubricant is all frosty as well on that axle. Yeah, sorry, on the gear rather. Let's keep trying it though. I want to know, oh God, that chassis is absolutely freezing cold. Let's try again. Come on. No, it's still completely dead at the moment. Oh, oh, I saw it turn its wheels. Ah, it's going. A frozen locomotive. <laughs> All right, so it's it's laboured. It's definitely laboured, but it's getting faster as we go. There we are, frosty locomotive. <laughs> Still covered in frost, but it is now working. Well, there's absolutely no reason to freeze a locomotive. No reason whatsoever. It looks pretty awesome, and it seems it will not damage the locomotive beyond repair. Obviously, it's not recommended. There's going to be water vapour on some of the internals, including the motor which probably won't do it much good long term, but the loco is working again. <laughs> so there you go, that is what happens if you freeze a model train. And the frostiness with that actually is starting to disappear. Look at that. That's happened really, really quickly. So has the heat from the motor conducted onto the chassis? If I get up close, 
with, within the space of about 20 seconds, that has gone from looking frosty to not frosty at all. Look at this. The scent, well, the underside is still frosty, as you can see, but no, it's just a damp locomotive now. <laughs> well, that's it. And then if you want a, a really easy way to make your locomotive damp, then bung it in the freezer. It works. Well, there we go. <laughs> that is that. What fun. So there you go. That is three of life's greatest unanswered questions answered. Yes, a double O gauge locomotive can pull an O gauge train. Yes, a double O gauge locomotive can pull the skin off a rice pudding. And it's worth doing that, man. I love rice pudding. And if you freeze a model train, nothing happens. It gets a little frosty looking. The thing will work after five and ten minutes. Um, that's it. I'm going to just have this rice pudding now. Bye. Mm. Good God, I love rice pudding.